This video is sponsored by Keeps. The single most important thing when it comes to your gaming setup is actually your monitor. So if you're watching this and you're rocking an RTX 3090 but you've got a 60 hz 1080p screen, then wh what are you doing? Uh, what am I doing? Because I seem to have lost the scissors. Oh scissors, where are you? They're not in this room, they're down the hall. And the monitor that we've got here, I think is going to be interesting to every single person watching, because this pretty much aims to be the sweet spot when it comes to not only PC gaming, but pretty much anything you can do on a computer, regardless of whether it's consoles, PC, or productivity. And for me, the thing that makes this even more exciting is that this is a monitor from Cooler Master. This is actually the first computer display I've ever seen from Cooler Master. So we're going to get really jealous. I think I can move these rubbish fake props as well. I was trying to make the set look better. But I mean, do you really care about my mum's aloe vera? It was a gift, it was a gift. This exact model is the GM32FQ. And this is a 32 inch monitor. Oh, oh ow, ow. <laughs> Oh, and a paper cut as well. It sports the rather sexy resolution of 2440 by 1440, also known as Quad HD, which in this part of the PC gaming town is very much known as the sweet spot of PC gaming. And I'm gonna start by saying that this thing is very sleek. I love the curved edges to this. I mean, don't get me wrong, this isn't exactly the most uh, attractive thing ever, but it does seem to have very slim bezels, and it does appear to be very similar in its design to the Corsair Xenion monitor that we reviewed last year. Unlike that Corsair panel, that to be honest with you was just far too expensive really to recommend to most people, this one actually comes in at around about the £400 mark. Oh, no quick release though. You have to use screws. You also have the base of the monitor. It's not actually anywhere near as heavy as it would look, but this again is actually pretty similar to the design of the Corsair monitor, but about £200 less. This just slots in, and then you grab your screwdriver and the four screws in the box to get this secured to the monitor body. Oh, okay. Not as heavy as it could be, or maybe I've just got rather strong, but you can definitely see the appeal of a 32 inch monitor. I mean, the stand's okay, but it's not the smoothest action out there. You do have left and right tilt. Not very much, actually. That is um, pretty pathetic. You've got a fair bit of tilt, though, so all in all, B minus. Does it wobble, though? Not too bad, actually. That's mainly the desk. Let's get this thing turned on. I do like the subtlety of the logo on the front, by the way. I have to say, that's actually pretty smart. Because this is an IPS panel as well, not only are you going to get great viewing angles, but of course the image quality of this thing should actually be very good. And first impressions are just that. This actually reaches around about 90-ish percent of DCI-P3. I think it's near a 95 actually. Usually I'd test this myself with my testing equipment, but Andy at eTechnics hasn't returned it yet, and apparently he's got COVID. So I wasn't going to go get it for this video. You've actually got speakers built in as well. And they do sound pretty awful. In terms of the outright image quality, this is really pretty nifty actually. I think I was expecting worse because this is cheaper than the Corsair Xenion, so you'd expect naturally a 32 inch IPS monitor that's 35, 40% cheaper to be significantly worse. But I mean, unless you had the two next to each other, I don't think you'd notice a big difference. I think that the main trade off with this is obviously that it's not 4K. And for this money, you definitely can get 4K monitors. Not necessarily ones that are 165 Hertz like this, but if you are gonna regularly watch TV or movies on this thing rather than playing games, then there is definitely something to bear in mind because it might be a better choice for you. I think we'll start our test with some Cyberpunk 2077. Now they've done, hopefully, the big final update. And straight off the bat, this looks excellent. It's a brilliant looking game. I think one of the best you can get. And as long as you're running it without ray tracing, you can actually get a decent frame rate as well. We're currently getting around about 70, so not fully saturating the screen, but certainly using some of the extra responsiveness that we've got there. It is also worth bearing in mind that you do also get adaptive sync technology baked into this display. And essentially what this is going to do is match your monitor's frame rates to the output of the graphics card, rather than locking it at the constant 60, 144, or 165, where you can get a little bit of stutter or tearing. This aims to smooth it out a little bit. It seems to be doing a pretty good job 
Triumph, even though it's not officially rated as G-Sync compatible, nor does it have a proper G-Sync module baked in. This is the exact sort of game that you're probably going to be buying a monitor like this for, because it really takes advantage of everything that it has to offer. The extra screen real estate that you get not only from a slightly increased resolution up from Full HD, but mainly that 32 inch form factor, it's great because you can sit in front of it, take it all in, and almost feel as if you're not really losing out versus playing on like a big TV downstairs, let's say. So it passes the Cyberpunk test, but what about the Fortnite test? It is incredibly annoying that I still get ID'd even though I'm almost 30, but most people want to look as young as possible for as long as they can. And male hair loss isn't something that we think about until it's too late. Keeps are wanting to change this, and that's why they're the proud sponsor of today's video. Keeps is a subscription service that's designed to help men keep their hair for as long as possible, and offer clinically proven treatments to combat the symptoms of hair loss, with customers noticing results in as little as six months. Treatments are delivered straight to your door, they're remarkably affordable, affordable and are personalised to your individual needs. Two in three men will experience some kind of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35, and Keeps can help stop hair loss and improve hair growth. You get quality, expert care, all without visiting a doctor or pharmacy, all through doctor-recommended, affordable Keeps plans. To get a whopping 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash PCcentric, or just hit the link in the description below. I guarantee there are loads of people watching this going, why are you playing Fortnite? Fortnite is for kids. But I'm a big kid, so allow it. Getting technical for a second, I think the main thing really that I'm looking for in these monitor reviews is not only value for money and of course image quality, form factor, but it is gaming performance, and what that actually means when it comes to a monitor or a display is essentially how quickly and how efficiently it can actually show one frame to the next. Because what you don't want to do is grab like a cheap 1440p monitor, because then the problem that you'll usually discover is that the motion clarity is just not very good at all. Personally speaking, I'm not really a fan of VA panels because you get this horrible ghosting and smearing. Obviously this is quite a big generalization as it is going to vary from panel to panel, but something like this that sort of sits in between the the very best IPS displays, but also the fairly inexpensive ones, it's pretty much sitting where I would expect. So it's not the absolute best on the market. And the reason that this is regarded as the sweet spot for PC gaming is because it's sharp enough that the whole image still looks good, but fundamentally it's still easy enough to drive. I mean, if you look at the frame rate at the moment, we're getting anywhere really between around about 120 and 150 FPS. And then bear in mind, this is actually a pretty high-end system with an i9 CPU and an RTX 3070 Ti. You can only imagine if this was at 4K, you just wouldn't be able to hit this refresh rate. We should, of course, also test out some racing games. Here we've got some Forza Horizon 4. This is actually the first time I've played this since playing 5, and it does noticeably not look quite as good. Still great, but just not on the same level. But the reason I wanted to test this version is because this is a game where you are going to properly max out this display most of the time, depending on the settings and, of course, the graphics card that you're running. So here we're pretty much nailing around about a perfect 165. It does drop a little bit, but that's where that adaptive sync technology comes in very handy and smooths anything out. Again, it's not the absolute best looking display I've ever seen in terms of motion clarity. You definitely do get a little bit of, well, it's not smearing. It's not like a horrible effect. I guess it's almost just like motion blur. So while this definitely isn't perfect, and if you are going to be playing like esports titles and you're going to be aiming for the highest frame rate possible, then yes, you should look at something else. I think for general consumers or including myself, like anyone that wants a really good gaming experience, but isn't necessarily going to be nitpicking every fine detail, I think it really does tick all the boxes. I almost thought there'd be some sort of catch, but generally speaking, there's not really. I think the main negatives with this is that its HDR performance is just not really worth talking about at all other than to say just take no notice of it. It just doesn't really have the capability to properly deliver a huge dynamic range to the outright display. The only thing that I really despise about the unit as a whole is the menu system because it's just rubbish. There's no real way to actually know what you're pressing before you pressed it. You know, it's not very visually appealing and ultimately the setting that you're trying to find, you can't always find. It's just not very logical, not very easy to use. Cool master, start using a four-way selector please. Of course, we should also discuss backlight bleed, and I'd say I'm not someone that is quite as vulnerable or susceptible to it as others, because I never really tend to sit in a room that's completely dark. But if you do, sure enough, there is some IPS glow here, you can't get around it. I wouldn't say that it's the cleanest I've ever seen, but it's definitely far, far away from the worst. All in all, pretty impressed. I think if you want an all-round display, you're not too fussed about ultra-wide, and you don't need anything specific for maybe watching TV or, of course, esports, 
then this monitor does come highly recommended. As always, if you do want to check out current pricing on this monitor, then you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. Let me know your thoughts on this. Is this the dream price, form factor, or would you go for something else? But either way, smash the like button, get yourself subscribed so you don't miss a video. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.